Hello YouTubers, welcome to another episode where we talk about the progress of the ambulance. You may be able to tell, maybe not, but the ambulance is still at Yam Squad HQ. But you can also probably be able to tell by the title that we have some positive news for the ambulance and for the journeys that can hopefully now happen that the ambulance has passed its MOT. Uh, I have now a C1 license to my name so I can drive this vehicle absolutely fantastic. So that's basically it for the video. If you want to stop there and watch something else, thanks for watching Yam Squad. Hit that like button. But now I'm going to go into a little bit of explanation about what it took to get this vehicle to pass its MOT. So maybe if you did want, to, if you didn't understand what MOTs are or you wanted to get a van like this and have to get it past an MOT. And if you want to do a C1 test here in the UK, what that kind of process is. So, like I said in the previous video about the van, the MOT failed with the horn. I'm not sure if I actually mentioned the horn. It failed in the horn because the horn was rusted and broken and it had sat there for too long and wasn't working. It failed on one of the sills that were rusty, this being a almost almost 10 year old vehicle, the rust is going to get to it, especially in Scotland. Rain, wet, cold, it's going to get rusty. And one of the front shocks was, was not at acceptable behaviour. And lastly, the handbrake needed to be looked at as well. So the horn, really simple fix, just get another one. <laughs> Hopefully no one gets bothered by the horn. May have been the third, fourth, fifth time I honked the horn. The sill, just a case of a little bit of welding done by the garage that I took the van to to get MOT'd. So a little bit more work, a little bit more time, a little bit more cost, but not a complicated fix. Same with the shock, just a case of replacing that. And these vans, a lot of the parts, so there's a Peugeot Boxer, there's the Fiat Ducato, and the Citroen Relay, and I think in America there's the Ram Promaster. I believe they're all the same, basically the same van, just with different shapes here and there, but they all basically take the same parts. So things like the front shock, really easy to find, not too expensive, really easy to fit. And then the handbrake, with this being a heavier vehicle, the handbrake is just always going to be one of those things where it needs to hit a certain standard and even on the, its good days, hitting that standard is a struggle almost. So just having to make sure it's, it's spot on rather than getting away with it a little bit. This van being now especially this heavy, it's probably going to fail quite a lot of the time on the handbrake. It has failed previously, the MOT when it was an ambulance on the handbrake, I think four times over its 10 MOTs since it was brand new. And that's just a sign, it is heavier. The, the way the handbrake was made, the way it stops, holds this vehicle still, may not be great. So we just have to keep on checking, keep that maintained in between MOTs. And so that's it really, the MOT itself, for those of you that don't know, in the UK, we have to do an MOT I actually don't know what it stands for. Could probably look that up. Probably on the screen right now. M O T. But it's the you do it every 12 months, and it's basically to make sure your vehicle is roadworthy. It's not too deep of a test, but it just it's kind of the really simple things like your lights, your tires, your brakes, handbrake, normal brakes, your things that you your seat belts, the things that you use to actually keep you safe, keep your the people in the car safe and the people on the road they're going to be with you driving and other cars safe as well making sure they're all okay and now it brings me just gonna get out of the out of the Sun now we get on to the C1 test the this vehicle is over the legal limit for driving on a normal car license here in the UK. The normal limit is 3.5 tons, 3,500 kilos, about, what's that? Almost 8,000 pounds over in the States or wherever you might use pounds as a unit of measurement. But if the vehicle is weighing 
over three and a half tons, you're not allowed to drive it. But also, there's, there's, it's not just as easy as that. The vehicle has to be plated, it has to be rated to be able to carry above that weight, which this vehicle is. This vehicle is plated to carry just over four tons, just, over, just almost 9,000, 10,000 pounds. And so to drive this vehicle, even if it weighs under three and a half thousand kilos, since it's plated or rated at 4,000 kilos, I have to, or a person has to have a license to drive it. And so in the UK, I believe it's if you're, if you've had your driving test since 97, if you've passed your driving test before 97, you have the grandfather rights to drive over three and a half tons below seven and a half tons on your license. But I passed my test in about 2010, 11, something like that. So I do not get grandfather rights, so I have to take a test. The test itself, it's not, it's basically your, your, your normal, it's like your car test here in the UK, which includes a hazard perception test, which you sit on a computer, you look at a computer screen, because you're sitting on a computer, and you click a button when you see hazards come up on the screen. So say, if the car has to swerve, you need to make sure you're, you're noticing those hazards and you're clicking the button when you see them. But it's a bit longer than the car test rather than the shorter one for the actual car test. And then you have multiple choice quiz, which again is a bit longer versus the car test. But again, it's, it's more applicable to bigger vehicles. So a bit longer there. So you have to know about tachographs, you have to know about weight limits, you have to know about width, height limits, driving hours, and then obviously on top of that, the things you need to know for your car test as well. The actual driving test, very, very similar to the car test here in the UK, but it's in a bigger vehicle. Depending on who you drive with, it could be, it's, it, the one I drove with, it was a Mercedes Sprinter, but a big one. Uh, an extended wheelbase, an L4H3, if you know that is in the UK, Ex extra long extended wheelbase if you're in America, I think it was a 170, I think it was what it was, um, versus this, which I think is a 170 anyway, or maybe a slightly shorter L4H3 here in the UK. So it made it quite good because I knew around this van anyway so I hopped in the van to do the test and to do or you had to do lessons as well to make sure you're comfortable with the, the van and then off I went and did the test and passed the test so absolutely fantastic but unfortunately which has kind of been a, a theme throughout building this van which I think I'm going to sit down and make a whole video about of the whole pro process is I had to there was things in the way because of what's going on around the world so since there was a couple of lockdowns, there's been driving tests have been cancelled and then moved forward. So if you had a, a driving test in the middle of a lockdown, it got cancelled, but then they automatically scheduled your new driving test when the lockdown was over. So that meant people like me looking for a new driving test that didn't previously have one had to basically wait until there was a cancellation. So what I ended up doing there's two driving centers very cl relatively close to me that I could go to and do both lessons and the test. But unfortunately, if I wanted to do those at that those locations, I would have to wait till at least middle of August to start the process. Luckily, there are more test centers around the UK, but they're obviously a bit further away. So what I ended up doing was driving an extra hour one way to do the hazard perception test. So I drove about an hour and a half to sit on a computer for about half an hour, get a certificate and then another hour and a half to do one test. And then I drove the other way an hour and a half to sit on another computer, do a different type of test, the multiple choice test, drive an hour and a half to do one test. And then for the actual driving test, another hour and a half and the lessons to do the test as well. I think it was definitely worth it because for me it meant I could get the, the test, the license, everything completed 
two months ahead of where I would have if I waited to drive to a closer location. But negatives would be I had no idea, I hadn't been to the test center before and the roads around it for the test, I hadn't been there, I wasn't familiar with them. So definitely, so by doing the lessons around that area really, really helped with knowing things like, okay, there's a blind dip here, I know cars park over here and all that jazz. So it's quite good to know, quite good to do the, the lessons before the test and all worked out positively in the end by passing the C1 test. So rounding all off back to the start, passed its MOT, not too much difficulty and passed the C1 test here in the UK so I can actually drive the ambulance. And so the plan is now to get the ambulance out there in the wild and have some adventures in it. Obviously I'm doing some training or a, a good amount of training, not just some training and it won't just be a case of right, I'm up and gone and training stops. I'm going to try and fit in what I'm doing with the ambulance around the training and seeing if I can improve improve recovery for the training with the ambulance for example a commute can be about 40 minutes for me currently if i use a ambulance maybe a few times a week can that commute be a bit shorter so i don't have to drive as much potentially and then obviously there's the opportunities for adventure here in scotland since it's such a small place the places there's so many lochs around that i want to visit and they're not too far away within a few hours i can go to some outrageous fantastic beautiful scenery and that's kind of the plan i can put the boat on the roof i can get the bike in the air again here which I'll, i'm going to be doing a tour to show you guys how it all works but i can do all of that and still train and so that's the plan over the next sort of little bit is to see, to just figure out all the little bits of the ambulance, does it all work, do, what do I need, is there little fine tuning bits that would make the whole ambulance better, but I will be taking you all along with me on the journeys and see how we get on because it's going to be, I've been, I've been waiting for this for a long time and I'm really excited to get out and, and have the adventures that I've been sort of imagining for so long and over the past sort of few months anyway a lot of it has been waiting for say things like the licensing or or the the form filling instead of actually doing things to the van so the van the ambulance has been sitting here patiently waiting to get out there and show us what it's made of and now i'm able to take it out on the road and show you guys what the ambulance is made of and so that will be it for today's episode, Jam Squad. If you have made it this far, thank you very much. I really appreciate all the support and really, really, really excited for the next stage in the Yambulance's journey. And remember to subscribe for the upcoming video at some point where I do actually tour around. You've seen parts here and there, sitting over there, sitting here. But I, I'm really keen to show you guys all the handiwork that Basically, my dad did and I watched, I think I did the electrics and I, I looked at most of the other stuff. I, I put that shelf up. I did the window. But apart from that, <laughs> but I'll let you guys know as we go through that tour process and I hope you have a great day.